Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia and welcome back to another A Better Commandery Guide video where we'll provide an overview of all the specialty counties in Total War Three Kingdoms. In the game, the landmass of China have been subdivided into commanderies, which are comprised of a capital settlement building and anywhere from one to three specialty counties like farmland, salt mines, or weaponsmith. In our individual commandery guide videos, we have already stressed the importance of these specialty counties. Not only do they add a unique flavor to each commandery, they also determine the most efficient build for any commandery. So I thought it is about time that we make an overview video about all the specialty counties that the game has to offer. To start, let's categorize all the specialty counties by how they are used in the game. It would not be a serious trivia guide video if we're not talking about income. So let's start by dividing specialty counties by income type. Under peasantry income, we have the livestock farm and the lumber yard. Under the commerce income, we have the fishing port, trade port, jade mine, and tea plantation. And finally, under industry income, we have the copper mine, iron mine, salt mine, tools maker, trade port, and jade mine. As many of you have probably noticed, the trade port and jade mine appears both under commerce and industry income since they provide both sources of income. Use these classifications to plan out how to best build your commanderies. For help with the details of how to build certain types of commanderies, prefer, please refer to my template building guides for peasantry focus and commerce and industry focus commanderies on my channel. Now, aside from these income generating counties, we have many specialty counties that provide other items of value outside of income. As shown here, we have food generating counties in the grain and rice farmlands, fishing port and livestock farm, item generating counties in the armorer, weaponsmith and animal tamer counties. And finally, we have special unique counties in the temple, horse pasture and silk and spice trader. We will be taking an in-depth look at all these counties in this guide. I have provided this table of content here to help facilitate our discussion. The numbers listed beside each county is the number of such counties that appear on the map. So let's kick things off with the grain and rice counties. The grain and rice counties share very similar building chains. They're both linear progressions without any branching. And as the level increases, we see more food production with a higher upkeep. When compared directly, rice paddies are superior to grain farmland as they have a lower upkeep at each level or producing more food at level 5. If you have these counties in your commandery, you should consider gearing them away from being income generating commanderies and rather have them focus on food production to supply food for those better suited to become income generating commanderies. There are a total of 15 grain farmlands and 9 rice paddies as shown here. You'll find the 15 grain farmlands in northern China above the Yangtze River and the 9 rice paddies in southern China below the Yangtze River. Next, we have the fishing port. The building chain for fishing port branches at level 5, where it shifts away from a building that's very similar to the grain and rice counties as it has an upkeep cost and produces food from fishing to potentially a commerce income county at level 5 that still produces a decent amount of food while becoming upkeep free. This branching decision at level 5 is a no-brainer, and you should always be taking option B for the increased commerce income. You're losing 2 food, which after reforms ends up being 4 food, but you also save 60 gold per turn from becoming upkeep free, and you gain that 100 flat commerce income per turn as well. So always take option B in your game. There are 8 total fishing ports in the game as shown here and it is not surprising that they are all located next to an ocean or a river source. Next, we have the livestock farm. The building chain for livestock farm is identical to the fishing port as we have a branching at level 5. Prior to level 5, you can see that it provides progressively more food and peasantry income. And at level 5, you can pick from two options that either produce a little bit more food or a little bit more peasantry income. The livestock farm is one of my favorite counties as it produces the key resource of food and income without incurring an upkeep cost like most other food producing counties. This makes them an ideal early game food producer for your campaign. As shown here, there are 13 total livestock farms scattered around China with no strong geographical correlations. 
Next, we have the Lumberyard County. There are two forms of Lumberyard County, just like with the grain and rice. In most of China, we have local pine, which is shown here. It has a similar level five branching pattern. From level one to level four, as you upgrade, you gain increasing peasantry income. At level five, you can pick between two options, where option A provides a higher peasantry income and a bit of trade influence, where option B provides lower income but gains plus five military supply to local commandery. As we have mentioned in many of our other guides, military supply is just not going to be an issue for most players. So I recommend you always pick option A here for the higher income. Alternatively, in parts of southwestern China, in the land of pandas, you can find lumberyards to be of the bamboo variety instead of pine. The building chain for bamboo lumberyards are linear and provides the same exact level of income. At level 5, however, because of bamboo's use in construction, which is even relevant today, the bamboo timber warehouse building will decrease construction time by two turns in the local commandery. This is a huge bonus and should be taken as quickly as possible before building out these commanderies. There are a total of 14 lumberyards in the game as shown here. Next, we have the trade port, which has one of the most unique building chains in a three-way branching at level 5. Prior to that, it's simply a building that provides increasing commerce income. At level 5, you can choose to focus on commerce income, create a port that is a mix of commerce and industry income, or become a spice income focused port once you acquire the resource spice. Between option A and B, I always recommend option B since you are simply giving up 20 points in flat commerce income for 100 flat industry income. Even if you're running 700% commerce income multiplier in that commandery, you simply need 60% industry income multiplier to break even. So always go for option B between the two. Unless you are for some reason committed to not build any industry income in the commandery, which is a huge mistake, as you should always combine your commerce income with industry income in the same commandery. Lastly, option C depends on how many sources of spice you have under your control. If you just have one spice county, then it might not be the greatest choice, but if you have all three under your control, then it becomes the far superior choice with its 220 flat commerce income as well as 50% spice income multiplier for all three of your spice commanderies. There are a total of eight trade ports on the map with five of them on or below the Yangtze River, which is coincidentally also where you find the three spice counties. Next, we have the tool maker. This is our first county whose building chain branches at level four. Like most industry income provider, the toolmaker adds 100 points in industry income with each level up. And at level 4, we have option A, which gives up that 100 in increase in income for increasing trade influence, while option B continues to add the same 100 points in industry income per level. I mainly go for option B in my games, unless I'm playing a trade-focused faction like Kongrong, Otherwise, the 20% trade influence just doesn't justify the 100 points in industry income that I have to give up. There are 9 tool makers on the map as shown here, and they're the most evenly distributed specialty county in the game. Following that, we have the iron mine, which shares the same building chain as the tool maker. The only difference here is that option A at level 4 is the standard 100 increase in industry income per turn route, and option B is giving up some of that income for more military supply. Since we already talked about how I feel about military supply, I will be strongly advocating you to take option A. So always take option A. There are seven iron mines on the map and they're shown here. Next, we have another one of my favorite counties in the copper mine. The copper mine branches a level five where you can give up just 50 industry income to gain 4% corruption reduction faction wide. I will do that in a heartbeat. Corruption is a strong mechanism to counteract, counteract rapid expansion in this game. You can easily see 50% or even 80% corruption in the mid to late game. So being able to reduce that by 4% for each of your copper mines is extremely powerful and worth it. So always go option B. 
There are six total copper mines on the map as shown here, and you should always be planning to capture all of them in your games, as they give a combined 24% 24, 24 corruption reduction. The reform that unlocks option B also adds another 8% corruption reduction bonus. So just from copper mines alone, you can have 32% corruption reduction faction-wide. This is the same as if you had an administrator in every commandery, as those reduces corruption by just 30%. Next, we have the salt mine, which is a linear building chain. The only thing special about it is that at level 5, it makes, 100, it makes 150 industry income jump instead of the standard 100. Other than that, it's a pretty standard industry income building chain. There are six salt mines on the map, with most of them near oceans. Next, we have the Jade Mine, which is a rare county that produces commerce and industry income from the get-go. There is a branching at level four where you pick up we where you, where you can pick from more industry income focused route or a more commerce and trade focused route. They're both great choices, and it really comes down to which income source your kingdom is more geared toward. There are only two jade mines on the map at Nanyang and Chang'an, and they're both located in central China. Following the jade uh, mine county, we have the equally rare tea plantation county. The tea county looks pretty simple, as it just provides a flat commerce income from level 1 to 3, then branches a level 4 where you can decide between a more commerce income focused route or you can give up a little bit of that income for a little bit more trade influence. This decision is once again dependent on whether you're gearing your kingdom towards trade or not. But more importantly, T is a resource that is needed for a much more lucrative branch of the in building chain, which is your main commerce building chain in the game. So it's always nice to lock down a resource of tea for your kingdom. As you can see here, you can only find tea plantations deep in southern China. So maybe the best way for you to acquire them is through trade and diplomacy. Next, we move on to silk and spice traders. These two unique income sources have the same county building chain where you gain more income and income multiplier as you level up for a maximum of 250 income and 65% income multiplier faction wide. Since there are three of each of these income sources on the map, we can estimate to have 250 flat income and 195% income multiplier prior to any reform bonuses or other character bonuses, or roughly 740 income per turn in each of these three commandery just from this one resource. These are great source of extra income and can be farther increased like other buildings uh, with the help of other buildings and reform like the trade port we mentioned earlier. You can sort of think of them think of them like the railroad buildings in Monopoly where you have a super lucrative property once you collected them all. As you can see on the map, the silk traders are in the northwestern part of the map and the spice traders are in the southwestern part of the map. Next we have the only military focused county in the game in the horse pasture, horse pasture county. It has a linear building chain where you have a small upkeep on the building, but you eventually gain 20% recruitment cost discount and 20% upkeep discount for cavalry unit. So with all four horse pastures in the game under your control, you can have 80% discount for cavalry recruitment and upkeep. And given how strong cavalry units are in the game, these counties can be game breaking. As shown here on the map, all horse pasture counties are in the north, with three of them clustered in the northwest. Interesting enough, all of them are around cavalry focused factions like Ma Teng, Dong Zhuo, and Gong Sun Zan. Next, we have a very boring looking county in the Temple, which is a unique singular county that provides a faction wide uh, bonus to satisfaction or increased research rate if you're the yellow turbans. It is located here next to Liu Bei's starting position and since Liu Bei's unique faction resource requires highly satisfied characters, this county is perfect for him. Finally, we wrap up our guide with the three item generating counties in the armor, weaponsmith, and animal tamer. These three counties all have three levels in their building chain 
which allows them to produce increasingly better armors, weapons, and horses periodically for your faction. They have high upkeep costs, but they are extremely worth it, as these items have high diplomacy value, great gameplay value, and most importantly, cosmetic value. There are two armorer and weaponsmith on the map shown here, and only one animal tamer in the northwestern tip of the map. With that, we have wrapped up our specialty county overview. Hopefully you have found this guide to be helpful and that you can take something learned here from this guide to add to your game. Once again, if you haven't done so, please consider subscribing to the channel to receive notifications of the latest episodes, guides, and Let's Play videos. I also take requests in the comment section for other guides that you want to see on the channel, as well as general suggestions to improve this channel, so please feel free to drop a comment below. I want to thank you all again for taking the time to watch my videos, and hope to see you all next time. Bye!